Sometimes we need to carry out certain actions before uh, saving a record into the database. In this video, we are going to see how to implement an entity listener in our Spring Boot application. For the dependency, we use Lambok, Spring Data GPA, and H2 uh, as embedded database. First thing, we, we are going to work with an entity uh, post. What we want to be, uh, what we wanted to do is to be able to back up the entity every time a persist or an update operation is triggered in our application. The entity is uh, composed as, can you see, an ID, a title, a body, and a version. And we want to, with every modification, to increase uh, the version attribute. We are going to, to use generated values so to let the database to manage the ID. And here we are making the backup entity. It will be the same object with the addition of a long field to store the ID post. We are going also to make uh, a constructor method uh, to make it easy to convert from a post object to a post back backup. Next step is to create our uh, repositories to, uh, so we can start to use uh, the standard method uh, provided. Worth mentioning, uh, when we create a repository interface, we must be specific about which model we are going to use. Spring provides uh, separate models like Mongo repository or GPA repository. In this case, we are going to use the GPA repository. So in general, it's an ideal to extend the CRUD repository as it uh, a generic one. Here we make also the second repository for the entity backup. And we start uh, to make our uh, listener. This class can be also a, a component, uh, so it uh, can be used in the dependency injection mechanism of uh, Spring. And here we are going to put all uh, the entity life cycle callbox, uh, callbacks methods. We start with the uh, brev resist uh, method. We this method is called before flushing the entity into the database. 
In this method, we are making sure that the version is set to 1. We also start to write our post persist uh, method. We, uh, which will be triggered after uh, the, the insert into the database. We inject our uh, backup repository. Also, we made uh, an attribute uh, just to be to be used in the different method for the backup uh, entity. And here we use the constructor to convert from post to post back. And we save it using the repository. And here we are, uh, we are putting the entity listener to activate the entity listener. We must use uh, this annotation. And we start to write our test. For this integration test, we are using the data GPA test. This consent us to aggressively reduce the spring contest, applying only the configuration relevant to GPA tests. Also worth mentioning this uh, annotation, uh, use an embedded database as, uh, is, as it our case, and all the default method, uh, all the test method, are transactional so after each test there will be a rollback for what uh, what is triggered in the method and here is our first test we just saving a new post and asserting that the post backup has uh, one element. As you can see, the rollback is set to true. Here is uh, triggered the prep resist method. And the test fails. This is because uh, we, we didn't save the entity. The, the post resist method didn't get uh, didn't get triggered. The why this happened is because a new transaction is required in order to save the backup entity. Let's remind that the Java resistance be specification for seeing that in a lifecycle method we should not invoke an entity manager or make a query operations. The transaction is, as you, can, as you saw, is obtained with the transactional annotation. Of course, there's a negative aspect here. If the first transaction failed, the second one will proceed independently.
here also we are uh, we use account query to force the entity manager to flush the database because as you as we know the uh, all uh, the entity manager implementation uh, wait until the last minute to save the records into the database And here we forced the flashing the post persist. As we can see, we have an ID for our entity. And this time the test is okay. Now let's, let us to strike the update methods. First one is a pre-update which will be triggered before the actual uh, update into the database. Here we are making sure that every time we make a change to our entity and call the save method, the entity manager will perform this action before flashing the record into the database. Now we write our second test. As always, we have we save a new entity. Then we update it. And we save it again. And we are asserting that here the backup have to to entity. As you can see here, we are not forcing the entity manager to flash the entity, so most probably our uh, post update will not get triggered the pre update method is okay and as you can see we have only the updated entity which is going to be saved two times so to avoid this we have also to flush the database before the updating in this case we, we can use uh, make use of the save and the flush uh, method which will flush uh, the changes directly without waiting the uh, into the database as you can see here we have the original entity now we updated the title we increase the version And then we, are, we make a backup of the updated entity. That's it folks.
All the code uh, written in this uh, video can be found on uh, GitHub.